So let's start with planets being ruled by countless gods throughout the cosmos. Uh, the truth is, in Mormon doctrine, God, the Father, is the creator of the entire universe, and he created the universe by and through Jesus Christ. God says, Worlds without number have I created, and by the Son I created them. Now, the Bible makes all kinds of promises. It says that we will inherit the kingdom prepared. We will be heirs of God and join heirs with Christ. Be granted to sit in Christ's throne even as he has overcome and sat down in his Father's throne. And we will inherit all. So basically the idea is simply that God will share all that he has with his children. We're going to be doing something in the universe probably something creative, I don't know. We're not going to be stroking harps for eternity. So that kind of brings us to the accusation that Mormons believe that they can have their own planet. Mormon theology doesn't assume to know how God will delegate in his kingdom. Like I said, this isn't what Mormon theology is all about. So what anti-Mormons usually try to do is they find some obscure quote and then they try to apply it to all Mormons even though it isn't in our scripture. Uh, it's some speculation or opinion of a uh, Mormon in the past. For those who receive eternal life, it has been made clear that our relationship between God the Father and Jesus Christ won't change. The scriptures state that we will become joint heirs with Jesus Christ and that we will be like him for we shall see him as he is and even says that we should become perfect even as our Heavenly Father is perfect. However, we're not sure exactly what that means. So my beef with anti-Mormons is this. Uh, they portray a general belief by Mormons for example, that each couple will have their own planet. That's not necessarily true. We don't know what the hierarchy will be. We don't know what the organization will be. Um, we don't know if Jesus Christ will open up a new universe with his, the joint heirs of Christ as his assistants. We don't know. All of those kinds of details lay in the realm of speculation and theory and are not taught in the Mormon Church. Elohim is actually the Hebrew word for God, so it's not really a name at all, it's just a title. Elohim is the plural Hebrew noun. Eloah is the singular counterpart. Elohim is the one usually found in the Hebrew text. Eloah is only used in poetry. Our official scripture says that God created the heaven and the earth in the beginning. So, in the beginning of what? The beginning of this universe, the beginning of time as we know it. Uh, anything beyond that or before that, we actually don't have any scriptural record of. Joseph Smith did have some teachings about it, but once again we're getting to more obscure ideas. But here's what he said. God dwelt on an earth the same as Jesus Christ himself did. Now when you look into the context of this discourse, you can see that Joseph Smith was explaining that if you were to see God, you would see that we truly are made after his image and likeness. But that's not all that Joseph Smith was teaching. He pointed to a scripture where Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. Now, according to LDS theology, what does all this mean? Well, first and foremost, it means that God the Father is a spirit. Like Christ, God the Father's spirit is considered by Mormons to dwell within a physical body. However, they teach that his power, knowledge, and influence fill the immensity of space. Mormon canonical texts do not describe God the Father's life before the creation of this universe. However, Christ's life, including things listed here, may be taken as a pattern. In fact, Joseph Smith once took a ring off of his finger and described it as being similar to eternity, one eternal round. Do Mormons teach that God the Father had a father in another universe and his father in another universe? That certainly isn't what Mormonism is all about. There was an insinuation made from a hint in scripture and there is speculation made on that insinuation. Mormons are encouraged not to dwell on or focus on these speculations and theories. In fact, Joseph Fielding Smith said that we should leave the mysteries, none of which have anything to do with the salvation of our souls. Brigham Young stated, 
Many have tried to penetrate the first cause of all things, in other words, how Heavenly Father came into existence. It would be as easy for an ant to remember the grains of sand on the earth. It is not for man with his limited intelligence to grasp eternity in its comprehension. It would be as easy for a gnat to trace the history of man back to his origin as for man to fathom the first cause of all things, lift the veil of eternity, and reveal the mysteries that have been sought after by philosophers from the beginning. So I guess I, there's one more thing I wanted to cover in this particular chapter. It's concerning Kalab, which a lot of people are confused about. They think it's a planet or something like that. It's actually a star. Uh, and the scripture that refers to it, it says that the star is near unto God, whatever that's supposed to mean. And uh, it kind of talks about relativity, that time is different in some places than it is in other places. Now, can you say that God the Father lives on a planet? I, I don't think I would go that far. I think it's kind of beyond our understanding. Uh, I've got a quote here from Brigham Young. It's pretty rare, actually. It says, He lives on another world. He is in another state of existence. So, you know, another world, another dimension, another state of existence, I don't know. Uh, there's also the book of Revelations, chapter 15, 2, that says the dwelling place of God was like a sea of glass mingled with fire, which in my mind basically means that it's too difficult to describe. This kind of goes back to the idea that Elohim is a plural Hebrew noun, but there's still the idea that they are one. Uh, you know, the biblical language always talks about the husband and wife becoming one. Jesus spoke to his disciples saying, Let them be one even as I am one with my Father. Uh, stuff like that. So there's a, the oneness involved, but still they're, they're plural. Why don't Latter-day Saints talk about having a heavenly mother? Uh, it's just kind of understood. If there's a father, there's a mother, but no one really talks about it. There's actually a scriptural basis for that. I'm in uh, Matthew 7, 6. It says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under your feet, and turn them again to and rend you. So detractors basically take this concept of a heavenly mother, the divine feminine, and basically reduce it down to celestial sex, which is a term that they entirely made up. Uh, you wouldn't hear a Mormon say anything like that. And uh, because it actually wouldn't make any sense, you're talking about the creation of spiritual beings. Uh, carnal and physical sex really wouldn't have anything to do with it. It's well known that in the Mormon church, polygamy was practiced. And naturally, during that time, members of the church, some of them anyways, speculated that Heavenly Father or Jesus Christ were polygamous as well. And, you know, they would justify this by looking at the scriptures. Jesus Christ revered the Old Testament prophets, of course, and they were polygamous, and uh, they were fine with it. It's not viewed as uh, an evil thing. However, that definitely isn't taught in the church that God or Jesus Christ are polygamous. Um, in fact, when you hear the very, very rare occasions about God being married, a uh, divine feminine, it's just understood as mother in heaven, and that's it. Um, and even that is of rare mention. And yes, it is uh, pretty much understood in the Mormon church that Jesus was married to somebody. Mary Magdalene may be definitely not taught that he had three wives, but he was probably married to somebody, and most scholars have come to that conclusion as well. Uh, you guys kind of get the drift. Just kind of misleading, and uh, I mean, I didn't even mention stuff like uh, them calling where God dwells star-based Kalob, like some sci-fi thing. Uh, you would never hear a Mormon use that term. Having the spirit babies be in diapers, I mean, that was just weird. So I'll finish the rest of it later.